Hello. Welcome. Welcome. So I would like to start a new series. This series is going to be about building a video display processor. So it's going to be a retro video display processor for hobby CPUs. And just a little bit of background on what a video display processor is. A video display processor displays pixels from memory on a screen. It's designed to make use of small amounts of memory. So once upon a time, memory was quite expensive. And so they had to come up with creative ways to make use of the small amount of memory that they did have. So because of that, there's usually no bitmap frame buffer. So if you did graphics on a more modern system, you would have basically a frame buffer that you can draw whatever pixels you want into. And video display processors usually didn't have something like that, or if they did, it was very low resolution. So generally it's based on an eight by eight pixel square. Sometimes it's 16 by 16 pixels, but usually eight by eight is standard. And these squares are called either tiles or characters, depending on the chip and the documentation. I'm going to use the word tile. And generally they had scrollable backgrounds called tile maps. Often they had a text mode. They had movable object graphics. So, you know, characters in games and things like that. And these are called sprites. And a video display processor is also known as a video display unit, a VDU, or a picture processing unit. That would be a PPU. And in the Commodore line, it's a video interface chip, or VIC. So what are the goals for this project? Well, I'd like to focus on late 80s, early 90s era technology. So this is the era where you would see VGA cards and things like that. And they did have a bitmap frame buffer, but consoles often didn't. So I'm thinking that's kind of the niche that I would like to have. I'd like to focus on pixel art graphics designed for demo scene or games. I don't plan on making a bunch of games, although I might make a Tetris clone. My primary goal is to make it useful for making demos, but the same hardware is used for making games as well. It's designed for a fairly slow CPU. So think 8-bit era CPUs running at 1 megahertz would be able to use this quite well. Low memory requirements, so no frame buffer, except in simulation because otherwise simulation might be too slow to be useful. It'll be tile-based, and I'd like to make sure that the FPGA that it runs on is inexpensive. So if you wanted to run this also with your project, then you're not going to have to shell out a bunch for like a super expensive FPGA. Uh, DVI output over HDMI, and that's with a PMOD to assist in that. There's also PMODs for VGA. I'd like to ensure that 1080p is at least possible, although I probably won't be using it unless it's pixel doubled or pixel tripled. And I'd like to have one circuit that can do all of these things. So lots of sprites, scrollable backgrounds, and scrollable text. And I think I've figured out a way of doing that. So it will just have sprites. And if you want a scrollable background, it's just a sprite that you move around. If you want scrollable text, it's just a sprite that you move around. And I think this will make it quite flexible, but hopefully simplify it quite a bit. I guess we'll see. So specifications. I'd like to point out that this is preliminary and subject to change. Very likely if I figure out a simpler way of doing things that maybe needs to cut some of these features, I'm probably going to do it. The resolution, of course, is 1080p if you have a fast enough FPGA. So all of the coordinates and things like that are designed around the maximum resolution of 1080p. So you can do that if you want. I plan to have support for pixel doubling and tripling. So after a lot of thought, I decided on 640 by 360 being the typical resolution. The main reason for that is it's 
exactly half of 720p and it's exactly a third of 1080p. So for the most part, that's what I'm going with, but the resolution is configurable. So you can have whatever you like, really, up to 1080p, of course. And there'll be a palette, or a palette, 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 I'm not sure how to pronounce this word, of 1024 total colors. And there'll be 24-bit colors. This is a little bit misleading because it's up to 1024 colors on the screen at once, but each sprite can only use 512 of those colors and each tile only 16 of those. You can have up to 512 total sprites. Currently, I've found that 256 sprites is fine for a maximum and to save a little bit of memory, I'm just gonna go with that. So depending on resolution, you can have up to 800 sprite pixels minimum per line. And this is kind of a wishy-washy hand wavy number. It could be as low as like 300, depending on what's happening with the memory bus and what the CPU is doing and things like that. So my goal was to get somewhere around 100 sprites per line on the screen at once. And actually you can get it many more pixels per line than this by simply using a pixel doubled or pixel tripled mode. And then you have more time to draw all of the sprites. Sprite dimensions. So I wanted arbitrary width and height on the sprite. So then you can configure the width and the height independently, and it can go from eight by eight pixels to 1024 by 1024 pixels. And of course, tile based. Tiles are laid out in sprite sheets. So each sprite sheet has a maximum size of 128 by 128 tiles. And the sprite sheet is just a grid of those tiles. And this is how you get tile maps, by the way. So you can have a tile map as, as large as 128 by 128, and you can scroll that around on the screen. The number of sprite sheets that are available in principle is limited only by memory. So you can independently configure the sprite sheet address for each sprite. And I think there's up to eight bits, so potentially 256 sprite sheets, but uh, practically speaking, it's gonna be much less than that. And each sprite sheet can have up to 2,048 unique tiles. So if you need more unique tiles than that, you can overlap the sprite sheets in memory. So sprite sheets start on a one kilobyte boundary. So you could have a sprite sheet only take up one kilobyte of memory and then have another sprite sheet overlap the previous one. And each sprite can also have a configurable tile set. And so you can mix and match sprite sheets and tile sets. So if you have a sprite sheet that is the same for a completely different tile set, you can do that. Colors. So a pixel in a tile can only have 16 colors. And if that sprite is transparent, then you only get 15 colors. A sprite sheet can specify one of 32 palettes for a tile, and a sprite can specify one of two palette sets. So if you multiply these together, then you get 1024. I say it's 24 bit colors, but the current hardware I have only does 12 bits. And in order to do a text mode, you just use sprite sheets. So you can use a sprite sheet as a text buffer and you get either an eight by eight font or you could do eight by 16. So by changing the sprite addresses for the tile sets, you can have a different tile set with the same sprite sheet. And then you just arrange sprites so that every other line is pointing to a different tile set essentially. And then you can get an eight by 16 font doing that. And Maximum text buffer size is 128 by 128 characters. That gives you smooth scrolling in the X and Y direction just by moving the sprite around. And the other requirement for this entire circuit is most FPGA dev boards only have a single RAM chip. And so you have to share that RAM with the CPU unless the CPU is external to the VDU. And most FPGA boards have SD RAM these days, so it has to support variable latency. So 
That's why I say 800 pixels per line is very hand wavy. It really depends on what's happening on the memory bus and how much wait cycles occur. So the design is meant to account for this and allow that to happen without visual artifacts on the screen. So how is this going to work in principle? Well, there will be a list of sprites and for each sprite, it will look up the tiles in the sprite sheet. Then it'll load in the pixels from the tile and then it'll draw that on a line buffer. So the line buffer is used to decouple drawing on the screen from the rest of the circuit. And then from the line buffer, it looks up each pixel in the palette or the palette, and then those pixels are drawn to the screen. So a bit of a demo. Here is what 512 colors looks like. So there's a little bit of artifacting that you can see in here. This comes from the way that I'm generating the tile set for this. But otherwise, I think this looks pretty good. And this is what 256 sprites looks like. So each sprite can be an arbitrary size, and I have a few different sizes of sprites. There's no scaling hardware, so these aren't scaled images. They're separate images for each size. But I think this is plenty of sprites. <laughs> I don't think you really need more, but if you wanted more, should be possible just by increasing the amount of memory that you're using for this. So I think this is pretty exciting. So what you're currently actually looking at is the emulator for this circuit. So I've actually converted this document into a tile set and you're looking at scrollable sprites. And uh, yeah, so the plan for this series is to do things a little bit differently. In the past, I've built everything on camera and that takes quite a bit of time and progress is very slow. So instead, I'd like to do progress report videos. And the style of these videos would be more a focus on telling the story of each module. And I'm going to explain deeper how each module works rather than how it was built. So I'm hoping this will unlock me to make faster progress. Although building documentation and explaining how things work and all of that does take quite a bit of time, but at least that can be asynchronous to actually building this project. So I'm hoping that'll be okay. I'm hoping telling the story and explaining how it works will be sufficient instead of watching me build each and every wire. But do let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you think that's a really terrible idea and you'd much rather watch me build it. I'm open to changing my mind, but yeah. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.